New gas cans have design flaws that hamper how they work. In my previous gas can video, I showed you how to fix it. This video shows you two more gas can mods and explains why these containers are made with such difficult design features in the first place. I do not like this spout. Well, here's some of the problems with it, and then I'm gonna show you uh, how to make your life a little bit easier. In my previous video, I highlighted three major design issues on these Midwest gas can containers that I felt made them difficult to use, and showed you simple modifications to make these cans more user-friendly. In this video, I'll show you two more mods and let you know why I think these cans have design features that make them difficult to use. In the previous video, we removed the locking collar that makes the nozzle hard to take off to fill the tank. Just a little snip right there and a little snip right there. We overrode the hard to push nozzle return spring that you have to compress to dispense the fuel. If you're familiar with this kind of spout and you know to operate it, you have to press this red latch in, hear it click, and once that red latch is pressed in, you need to depress the plunger, and you're supposed to do it by putting that on the rim of the car, and if you have it there, it presses in under considerable force. If I let go, it snaps back. So it's spring-loaded in order to get the gas to come out. And we removed the plastic mesh filter, which I later found out is a flame arrester that interferes with the gas container being filled at the gas station pump. As you can see, this little sucker is really in there. So why are these containers engineered in a way that makes them awkward and difficult to use? I'm going to give you my interpretation based on the information provided on the Midwest Can website, midwestcan.com. The mesh can insert, which they call an internal flame mitigation device, and the spout, which they've trademarked as the vapor locking quick flow spout, combine to create what Midwest describes as their exclusive flame shield safety system. The website centers their marketing message around safety, stating that their design is a safer way to store, transport, and handle flammable liquids, and that their safety features are a priority of consumers. Let's talk about their vapor locking quick flow spout. It seals tightly and due to the spring and locking latch cannot be left in the open position. So gas vapors will not escape when the containers are in storage or in transit. I appreciate these efforts and I'm in favor of taking precautions to keep myself and others safe. But the spring mechanism in the locking spout is difficult to operate. This could lead to spilling fuel and awkward handling, possibly leading to physical injury. Why? At 6.3 pounds per gallon, 5 gallons of gasoline weighs in at 31.5 pounds. At this weight, fueling a car, mower, or gas-powered tool takes strength and good form so you don't injure yourself supporting the can's weight. The inconvenience of having to line up the spout just so. Depress the nozzle release lever and push in the spring-loaded nozzle to release the fuel flow while supporting and balancing a heavy container is not a natural motion, leading to the possibility of spilling fuel and moving in a way that could stress your back or other body parts. The way the spout is designed, it doubles as an air vent to let air in to displace the fuel that it's letting out. This design is inefficient, making the can take longer to dispense the fuel, which is inconvenient and could possibly compound injury from having to hold a heavy container in place longer. I actually believe that Midwest would agree that their design limits the flow of fuel, based on the release of a new design they call their High Flow Racing Can, which they are positioning as being able to dispense 5 gallons in 1 minute or a gallon every 12 seconds. I wonder if they're going to rename their current quick flow spout simply to spout. The mesh can insert, which I called a filter and removed because it prevented the tank from easily being filled at the gas station, 
they describe as a flame mitigation device. If you browse their website, you'll see a video demonstration of a gas container without their flame shield safety system, pouring fuel into an open fire. Can you guess what happens? The flame travels up the stream into the container and the gas can spits out a fireball. The video states, independent testing confirms that portable plastic fuel containers equipped with a flame mitigation device reduces the chance of personal injury when improperly used around an open flame or spark. It's my personal opinion that you should not pour fuel into an open flame in the first place. And I'll bet that you knew that, too. I appreciate making things safer, but don't make them hard to use for the majority to compensate for the stupidity of a very small minority. Are kitchen knives made of rubber to protect accidental stabbing? Yeah. Are cars limited to 20 miles an hour to protect from injury by reckless drivers? You get the point. I appreciate safety features, but not when they substantially limit the usability of a product. Midwest's website has references to what they describe as national consumer research, or research they conducted themselves. Here are some examples. When the dangers of improper storage and or handling of flammable liquids are explained and clearly demonstrated, Container safety quickly becomes the number one consumer purchase decision. Eight in 10 consumers find the flame shield safety system a very appealing way to obtain added protection from accidental fires and injuries that can occur with improper use in storage of combustible fuels. And fire prevention and safety are the number one most important attribute to consumers in the selection of a portable fuel container. This is all great information that I'm sure comes as no surprise to anyone. But how many of the people surveyed regularly use gas cans? And how many of them have used a can with Midwest's flame shield safety system and still say they want it? Conveniently, there is no published research on their website saying what percentage of people want a gas can that's easy to fill, or stats on people that think a gas can's design should make it easy to dispense fuel. And while we're at it, why not ask the question, how often do you dispense gas into an open fire? The bottom line is that marketing or even government safety regulations are great but not when they come at the price of compromising the performance of the products that they are trying to make safe in the first place. That's my opinion. What's yours? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, I promised you two more video gas can mods in this video, so here they are. I hope they're helpful. I promised you some additional gas can hacks to make these easier to live with every day. Well, here's the spring that I showed you how to remove in the last video. But maybe some of you want that spring-loaded feature, but you just don't want the overwhelming force that's required to depress the nozzle. I'm gonna show you how to modify this spring so you get some of the spring-loaded advantage, but you don't have to wrestle with the brute-like force that this spring exerts. Here's what we're gonna do. The spring in these containers is about three and a half inches or about 90 millimeters. I'm going to stretch the spring to about twice that distance, about 180 millimeters, and then we're going to cut it down so it is still three and a half inches. I think I need more grip. There we go. A little more. A little bit more. I don't want to distort it too much. Final pull. Oh yeah, I need a Gatorade. Well, close enough. I'm gonna use my original mark and let's cut that right about there. Now all I need to do is just wind and flatten this end 
and we can try inserting it into the nozzle to see if this does what I'm hoping it does. And that is give us the spring action, but also make the nozzle easier to operate. I guess I kind of expected it would be hard to form this end because after all it is a spring. Here, let's see if we can just tip that end down a little bit. All right, hey, close enough. We're gonna give that a try. It's still plenty springy. Uh, hopefully this eases up once we put it in the nozzle. So here's my adjusted spring. Here's how much spring we removed to free the nozzle and get to the spring. If you remember, you roll off this O-ring and that allows this assembly to slide out of the nozzle. There it is. Now there's a place for the spring. We're gonna put the spring back in place right there. And it looks like we wound it just enough that um, it fits correctly in that barrel. And now we'll reinsert the nozzle, lining the pin right there that controls the spout. We're gonna line that up press it down, and then while we are depressing the nozzle, we'll hold that down and we will slip the O-ring back on and just check. And it looks like it seals very well. And so now we have a nozzle that's spring-loaded. And I can tell you right now, it requires much less force than the original spring. Not exactly completely easy, but maybe it's better than it was before if keeping that spring in place is important to you. Now, you all know that if you're going to let fuel or any liquid out of a sealed container, you need a vent to let air in, so it flows smoothly. When you don't have good venting, you get that glug, glug, glug sound, and you can see the sides of the gas container breathing in and out as it tries to let liquid out while also letting air in. Well, another one of my criticisms with this spout design is that the only place that this tank can get air in is through this little nozzle that runs above the spout. So as liquid is going out through the spout, it's also trying to drink in the air from here. Well, it used to be that all gas cans had a vent that you can open. It was somewhere back here that wouldn't interfere with where the liquid was. You'd pop it open and the gas would pour out smoothly. Not so with these new cans. So what are we going to do? I'm going to show you how to add your own vent. Here they are. Let me give you a closer look. This is the Yellow Fuel Gas Can Jug Vent Cap Chilton Briggs JSP Manufacturing. Oh, it doesn't matter what they're called. These are little add-on vent lids, and uh, we're going to put one of these on the back of that gas can. So we can just pop that cap open and vent it at any time. The instructions say this fits both plastic and metal fuel jugs. You will have to drill a 31 64th inch, one size below half inch, hole into the can and then push the vent into the hole. Well, I'm not so sure I have a 31 64th drill bit, so uh, we're just going to have to come as close as we can. Well, this is a happy surprise. It turns out that I do have a 31 64th drill bit in this gigantic set of drill bits that I bought from Amazon. Um, I didn't even know that it went that big, but there you go. I will put a link to this inexpensive and very versatile drill bit kit down below. You're probably not going to fill this gas can higher than this level, assuming that you're filling it while it's laying flat. On this Midwest can, there's a nice flat spot 
right here on the back. I don't want to put it right on the seam. I don't want to compromise the strength of the two shells that makes up this gas container, but we are going to put it up nice and high on that flat area right there. So I'm just going to make a mark. I'm going to start by doing a 3 16 pilot hole. I want to make sure that I don't get little plastic bits inside the tank. I'm going to remove the nozzle so I'm able to put that right up against the back of the bench so I can exert enough force on here to get a clean hole. Oh, that bit in nicely. Tell you what, let's back that out. Because I don't want these curls going into the can, let's just see if we can clean that up a little bit just to make this neater. And there we go. That actually came out pretty darn nice. Well, hopefully drilling the hole was the hard part. Let's see if we have luck putting in the valve. And it wants to go, but there's that little rim that's going to uh, lock it in place once it's there. Now, I just happen to have this little uh, soldering air gun, and so I'm just going to set it to a low temperature and see if we can warm up the plastic a little bit to make it pliable, and then we'll see if we can pop in this, uh, this cap a little bit easier. Sorry, let me jump in here. The video clip for some reason didn't come out of me heating up the can and then inserting the valve, but heating it up did work. Let me show you. We have our vent. We have our modified nozzle. I'm Mike, the channel is Mike Fixed It. If you haven't subscribed, please consider it and give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful. Now that you have a better understanding of why these gas containers are made the way they are, I'll leave it up to you to decide if a gas can mod is appropriate for your needs. As always, I look forward to your comments, leave them in the place below. Be good, be well, and be safe, and I'll talk to you real soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. So here's a bonus mod. Uh, maybe it's more of an accessory than a mod. This is actually a cap that was uh, 3D printed out of PLA, and uh, it's got a little hole for a lanyard there. And if you're concerned about anything splashing out of here, just get yourself a cap like this, and you can stick it on there. I think what I'll do is I'll get a little piece of string and just connect it between that loop and the handle just so I don't lose it. And if you want to come up with a cap of your own, I'll just let you know that this one is 13 sixteenths. That is 20.6 millimeters. So if you want safety features that actually make sense and are easy to use, you might just want to fashion yourself some kind of cap just to keep things from splashing around, especially in transit. I fixed it.